today we're going to do something really fun and it's actually something that I've always wanted to document for you and that is I want to install a cattle panel trellis. So we have had two sets of cattle panel trellises and they actually used to exist right here in the garden. So today we're actually making use of one of them and we are going to install it right here and on that trellis I'm going to grow winter squashes. So we're not new to installing this trellis. We actually have a whole write-up on how we do it, how we even measure for the proper arch height, um, and all that good stuff. But this is the first time that we're actually going to film the process. The first thing you're going to want to determine is what kind of post to use. So I'm going to show you the post we're going to use today. This is a T-post and you can use either T-posts or U-posts. It's really going to depend on your situation. For this particular situation, we're going into the ground, but we're also doing a taller arch, a taller, skinnier arch. So I wanna have a little more sturdy support and the T-posts are taller than the U-posts and more sturdy. So especially if you live in an area with high wind and you're going for a very high tunnel, you might want something that's gonna give you a little more rigidity. Um, so today we're going to use the T-post and we're going to need four. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, and then of course your cattle panel trellis, which again, you want to make sure that you're actually getting cattle panel, not something that I think they call might be a wire grid or like hog wire or something like that. You want to make sure that this is actually really sturdy. Remember, a lot of this is going to be under the ground, so you're going to want to make sure that wherever you're digging, you check with utilities and make sure that there's no irrigation lines or anything important down there before you hammer these into the ground. Um, and then lastly, handling a cattle panel can be a little awkward, um, so sometimes this job is better with two people, so if you can, find a friend to help you out because it's a lot easier if one person grabs one side and the other person grabs the other. I am gonna move these. These are protecting my directly sewed beans, actually. So that's why they're there. But for right now, I'll move them, or at least, yeah, I'll move them. That's probably better. Like I said, um, we have a whole write-up on measurements, calculating the height of the arch, other important notes, so make sure you check that out too in tandem with this video. This was really just the first time that we were able to actually film this because before um, it was all just pictures and so now we're actually putting video to it, which I think can be really helpful. Because of the design of the garden, we know where everything's going. Um, we like to inset the post just a little bit on the cattle panel. It's like four feet wide, right? It's 50 inches wide. 50 inches wide. So we're going to inset the post just a little bit. Yep. Um, and we're going to put one in that corner, one in that corner, one here and one here. You do want to make sure you're going straight. You can use a level. I tend to just eyeball it. And then the inset that we're doing, it's 50 inches wide. We're going to 40 inches apart. Okay. And so Let me get the other post. that's what we're going to see here. And that's going to be to the center of our stake. There's lots of ways to measure the center, but we're going to go to our center of our stake. I'm just going to take us right here. Can we look in line with each other? We can. Eyeballing. That one's way out. Not up and down, but like. No, I know. It looks fine. Uh, we're going to put at least two feet underground. Okay. That leave, These are five foot T posts, that'll leave three foot above ground. This one's going to go over here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I'll actually need Randy to come help guide me a bit here. Okay. She'll have her hand on it. Yeah. So that I can so, see if we're staying sort of in line. Last time we were here, we um, planted this bed over here. And since then, we did this bed and this bed. This is going to have winter squashes, and then we might have one more bed for melon. As you know, this has been like a very fast-paced, just get it done kind of project, and it's just basically so we have some food for this season while we're doing the rest of the yard and making some major changes. Yes, lots of changes in the yard. Yeah, lots of changes. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So this is going to be our arch tunnel. Awesome. Um, one of the things I'll talk about or mention is it's very hard to swing a hammer up high, so if you have a step ladder, um, I suggest using a step ladder. So the first time that we ever put our cattle panel trellises in, 
I'll see if I have a throwback photo. But basically, we weren't even doing video at that point, so it was just pictures and description. But it's very, like, we lay out all the different steps and all the things that you need and tips and things like that. But since we decided for the temporary garden to use our castle panel, we were like, why not take that opportunity and film it for people who might be visual learners? So if anything, that just helps to strengthen the tutorial as well. So perfect. I'm going to put these about two feet. Right on those two parts. Okay. Yeah, that's better actually. Okay, so go ahead. You can catch catch your front leg. Yeah. On that front. Yep. Perfect. Because that gives it. So now T post Watch is holding avocados. it. Watch avocados. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm gonna come and push so it yeah. down. Now the T post is kind of holding it, so it can put, have pressure put on it. Beautiful. Okay. There you go. Straighten it a bit. Oh my gosh! Oh, and we get to plant the winter squashes right here. Look, there's even an old piece of a squash. Here. So yeah, these chalices are so sturdy and they last. That's why I love them. And we actually have one right here for our berries. Um, but I'm really glad that we're able to incorporate them in the garden, in the new space. So the next part, I'm gonna bring you in closer because we're using something called tie wire to attach the trellis to the post securely. All right, so I'm gonna come on in here. How good does this look already? And we're gonna talk about tie wire, which actually there's already a mini video on this, but let's there just talk is. about it. Um, we're gonna tie these in two places. We're gonna tie the bottom so it kind of pulls back and holds against, kind of like that. And we're gonna tie them at the top as well. So. Um, I do a double wrap, so I stretch the wire out, then I fold it in half, so I have a double layer. And then at an X, where it meets the post, you make a U and you go around, and then you cross the two wires, and then you come back in on the underside, like this. And then you twist it. And after you twist it, just to hold it in place. Give it a couple twists with a pair of pliers, and then you can lever it to make it nice and tight. Do it again. Clip off your extra. I keep my glove out of there. And then I always fold these away so that you can't catch yourself on it. So no yeah. sharp edges. You also want, it's helpful to have gloves. Yes. Wear gloves when you use tie wire. It could be rusty, it could be it usually has oil on it. We'll tie another one on top. So pull out some tie wire, fold it in half, flip that off, and then probably go here, I think. We're gonna go around the post, make a little X. And then on this side, give it a little twist. Use your pliers. nice and tight, clip it off, and then fold it back. And you don't have to use your thumb, you can use your pliers to fold it back in there. So as Sam does the other three remaining posts, you can see here how ours turned out. The height is adjustable and we show you how to calculate that, it's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below or make sure to check out that post because like I said, it was written quite a while ago. It has all the details in it. And I hope you found this helpful. All right. Here are, this is a whole bunch of, oh, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> Mel, uh, winter squashes and melons. So the melons are not going to go here. I think I'm going to put the melons in another bed once we actually clear out this area here. Remember, like I said, all of this is just a slow work in progress. But I have some beautiful winter squashes, things like butternuts and delicata and some pumpkins that we are going to plant 
And typically I would do like probably four. One, two, three, four on this side and four on this side. And we'll let them grow. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below, but make sure to check out that blog post, like I said, because it has the full breakdown of everything, plus some really helpful tips. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next week.